Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today we'll be taking a look at what are the top 5 carries in teamfight tactics and how can we utilize them to best win games. The purpose of this video is to give you a better understanding of how to go about building a composition while keeping in mind one of these top 5 carries and how to effectively prioritize items on them. But first, I'd like to remind you to click on the link below and take a look at the updated ProGuides.com if you want to learn more about teamfight tactics. ProGuides will always have info on the newest patches, best builds, and strategies. There are all kinds of different resources from top players to help you be the best player that you can be, so be sure to check out ProGuides.com using the link in the description. Alright, now let's get right back into the video. Before we begin, it's important to take note that all the champions mentioned are assumed to be 2 star upgraded units. Coming in at number 5, we have Kale. Kale has recently risen in popularity with the recent buff to Nobles in patch 9.16, and with Nobles being the current most overwhelming composition, let's talk about how to make Kale the carry of the build. Once upgraded, her ultimate ability gives damage immunity for 3 seconds to the 2 weakest allies, which can include herself. This is very powerful, as when combined with the Noble buff and mana regenerating items, it allows her team to essentially become unkillable. The Noble buff allows the shielded targets to regain health during the damage immunity, alongside with health regenerating items like a Bloodthirster or Hextech Gunblade. Combine that with Kale ulting frequently due to mana regenerating items, allowing her to keep her whole team alive for long periods of time. The best items you can build on Kale are Spear of Shojin, Gwinsu's Rage Blade, Seraph's Embrace, Yumi's Blade of the Ruined Kind, and Darken. If you notice, all these items stated have something to do with increasing attack speed, increasing mana regeneration, or increasing starting mana to get the first ultimate off quickly. The best three items on Kale are taken from those three categories, so let's take a look at some examples. Seraph's Embrace plus Spear of Shojin plus Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Because of the double tier from Seraph's Embrace, Kale's first ultimate will go off much faster, which in turn activates the Spear of Shojin, making each auto gain 15% mana rather than the usual 10%. And as the Gwinsu's Rage Blade starts kicking in, she's getting her heroic ability off one after the other with very little downtime between ultimates. It's quite a sight to see. Another item combination that can achieve a very similar effect is Darken plus Yumi's plus Blade of the Ruined King. Darken increases starting mana just like Seraph's. Yumi's has a hidden ability where the wearer gains double the mana for each auto attack. A quick note on Yumi's, there's a common misconception that you need the 3 sorcerer buff online to gain double mana for each auto, but that is not the case, and any sorcerer gains double mana as long as they are a sorcerer. And lastly, Blade of the Ruined King increases attack speed to really get the ultimates going in quick succession. So it's good to keep in mind that these items are interchangeable. You want to use Darken or Seraph's, Yumi's or Spear of Shojin, and Blade of the Ruined King or Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Kale's best synergies include the 6 Noble buff and a hyper carry like Draven or Jinx to keep them alive and dish out tons of damage without dying. At number 4 we have Yasuo. Blade Masters are shining once again with a new addition of Camille, allowing for a new and elusive synergy, the legendary 9 Blade Master. When Yasuo is put on an island, meaning there are no units surrounding him, he gets a massive shield, allowing him to stay in fights for longer periods of time, allowing his ultimate ability to really shine. The key to his ult is the on-hit effect he applies with each stab, and if he lives long enough to get a third ultimate off, then he performs a powerful crowd control effect with his tornado blast. Now this is much easier to achieve when Yasuo is combined with at least a 3 blade master synergy. You want to use on-hit items on Yasuo like Hush, Red Buff, or Cursed Blade, along with a defensive item like Guardian Angel, Dragon's Claw, or Phantom Dancer, depending on what the majority of the lobby is playing. The three best item combinations usually include two on-hit items and one defensive item. A great example is Hush, Red Buff, and Guardian Angel. These three items are the strongest for the current meta in patch 9.16. If you happen to scout a lot of players going sorcerers in the lobby, swap out that Guardian Angel for the Dragon's Claw. Are there a lot of ninja assassins running around? Get that Phantom Dancer going to prevent critical strike damage. A strong Yasuo is made with scouting. As mentioned earlier, it is ideal to play Yasuo alongside a 3 Blade Master buff, but it is not necessary, as an upgraded Yasuo can fit in any composition. That's what makes this champion so versatile. At number 3, we have the League of Draven. Draven has been a hyper carry since the birth of teamfight tactics, and patch 9.16 is no exception. With the most recent buff to Infinity Edge, we see some scary numbers topping the damage charts when Draven is wielding the item. 
A champion like Draven is a little bit tricky because his power spike exponentially increases once he's two starred with very specific items. So always be cautious of when you place Draven on the field. Finding him in the shop doesn't always mean putting him on the field right away. You want to wait until you have the required items, the proper synergy, or once he's upgraded to a two star unit. The items that should signal to you it is Draven time are Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, Runan's Hurricane, and Red Buff. Red Buff is more situational, so let's talk about item priority. The most important item Draven needs is Rapid Fire Cannon. This allows him to stay in a safe spot and not run into a dangerous position due to his short attack range. Now, once you have him in a safe spot with the RFC, we look for a damage item like Infinity Edge or Bloodthirster. Take care when deciding to build Bloodthirster and scout to see if enemies are running Red Buff or Morello Namicon, as those items will prevent your Draven from healing. If majority of their lobby are running Morello and Red Buff on their units, prioritize building the Infinity Edge. The thought process behind this is, since you won't be able to heal anyways, might as well do tons of damage before wilting away to a Red Buff proc. So our Draven is in a safe spot with RFC, has the damage from Infinity Edge or Bloodthirster. Now we look for the Runan's Hurricane to start hitting multiple enemies. Since Runan's applies on hit effects, this is where you can combine it with Red Buff if you weren't able to find your damage item. You usually want to utilize Draven with a 2 Imperial buff or a 3 Blademaster buff to start with. There are three ways to go about knowing when to put Draven on the field. One, you have no additional synergies, but you have a 2 star Draven with 2 or more items. Two, you have one synergy to help him out, either Imperial or Blademaster, and at least one item. Three, if you have both the Imperial synergy and Blademaster synergy on the field, go ahead and put the Draven in. Look for these three signs to help with your transition a little better. Coming in at number two, we have the flavor of the month, Jinx. Jinx has taken everyone by storm with her raw power. All she really needs is a tanky front line to allow her to pick up a few kills so she can pull out a rocket launcher for massive AoE damage. Pair her with a gunslinger and you have a fireworks show. Jinx really needs two kills to get her passive ultimate ability going. Her auto attacks then turn into an area of effect rocket launcher that deals splash damage to units surrounding her current target. Add a few items and a beefy front line, enabling her to grab the first two kills and she becomes a monster. Just like Draven, Jinx has a short attack range and can sometimes run into the thick of things, so equipping her with rapid fire cannon allows her to stay safe. The next best items on her are Red Buff and Hush, because with just one other gunslinger on the field, Jinx can apply the on-hit effects to multiple targets. She doesn't really require damage items, as her rocket launcher is currently a little overturned, and does enough damage without any additional items. So since this is the case, Runan's is always a great choice as your final item that synergizes well with her damage boost after getting her two kills. So the ideal item combination for Jinx would be RFC plus Red Buff, or Hush depending on what you need more, and Runan's Hurricane. As we mentioned earlier, Jinx needs a good front line that will give her time to get excited. Her best synergy is with Brawlers. With the extra health Brawlers receive, they become the meat shields required for Jinx to get her passive going, and you can get an added bonus if Vi is one of the Brawlers, which is the Hextech synergy. Add in another Gunslinger to accompany Jinx, and she really gets to shine. An alternative option is to combine her with Nobles, and Lucian happens to be both Gunslinger and a Noble, allowing for a scary synergy at 6 Nobles plus Jinx. Is a little less consistent as it requires the five star unit Kale, and that is why the Brawler synergy is more ideal. If you aren't finding either Nobles or Brawlers, Knights are a good cheap alternative with Mordekaiser, Garen, and Darius, later upgrading them to Poppy and Sejuani. A Fortnite buff does wonders in keeping Jinx safe. And the most powerful carry of them all, coming in at number one, is Swain, as with the right items and synergies, he can outright 1v9. With the recent changes to the Demon Synergy, Swain has become even more of a monster. Once the Demon Synergy is online, his auto attack now has a chance to drain mana, allowing him to get his ultimate ability to go off faster and more consistently. Once he transforms, the lifesteal is enough to either keep him at full health or bring him back up to full health, making him very hard to kill without the Grievous Wounds effect from Red Buff or Morello Namicon. Did I just say that he's hard to kill if the Grievous Wounds from Red Buff or Morello Namicon are applied to him? Well, the new bug fix from Guardian Angel now removes Grievous Wounds, making it the single best item choice for Swain. With an added bonus of his ultimate being able to continue during the GA animation, meaning he is continuing to heal during the downtime that Guardian Angel takes to activate. The second best item on Swain without a doubt is Morello Namicon. Since his ultimate targets multiple people, the now longer 10 second anti-heal debuff from Morello Namicon will be applied to multiple units, helping with shutting down all the six noble synergies running around. 
This being the case, you want your swain positioned in the middle of things, hitting as many units as possible, draining life from as many units as possible. The third item can be an item of your choice. You can add in more healing with Hextech Gunblade, you can look for defenses with items like Warmogs, Dragon's Claw, or Phantom Dancer. The world is your oyster after you've established the Guardian Angel plus Morella Namicon item combination. Now, the real threat of Swain will come from his synergies. This is where he can win you the game. The first synergy you want to prioritize is 2 Demon, giving him an instant 40% chance to mana drain and get his ultimate off quickly. The second synergy you want is 2 Imperial, giving him more damage and more lifesteal with his ultimate. These synergies are more realistic to acquire, as they only need one other unit of each to take into effect. Lastly, if you have the slots available, you will look for the 3 Shapeshifter bonus, basically giving Swain a free war mods once he transforms. Alright, and that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found some of this information here useful. Let us know if some hyper carries you were able to come up with in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with the most recent changes in teamfight tactics. Until then, see you all in the next video.